I'm Chase Summers. I'm the head of customer success and sales here at Data Edo. Um, alongside of me is our founder and CEO. Many of you have probably seen him in his cartoons, uh, Piotr Kananov. Hi, everyone. So today we'll be running through Data Edo 10.3. Um, so as always, we'll kick off with a bit of a background on Data Edo. Uh, majority of you are familiar with Data Edo, uh, but we'll do a brief catch up. And then we'll run through the new updates. So what's here in 10.3. And then we'll go into a bit of what is to come. Um, and Piotr, we'll have the agenda on the next slide. So with the under development, you'll be able to see a little bit of, of what's to come in the future and what we're working on. Um, we have some pretty big releases planned um, for later this year, which we're really excited about. And then what you need. Um, so whether you will get the upgrades, not get the upgrades, we'll clarify some questions on licensing then. Um, then at the end, we will have a Q&A. So as we run through the webinar, feel free to throw your questions in the questions tab, and we'll answer all of those at the end. Um, but feel free to throw them in as we go here. So now we'll head into a bit of the architecture. So what is Data Edo? Um, first, Data Edo is a data documentation tool, um, also called a data catalog or metadata management tool. Um, our primary goal is to serve as a single source of truth about your data. And as far as the way that the tool works, um, again, for majority of you, it's going to be a recap, but we have your data. So this is going to be everything from relational databases, NoSQL, data lakes, um, even flat files, pretty much anything that you can think of, placing that into the desktop. So we're going to pull in that metadata. Everything is going to be centralized through the metadata repository, which is SQL Server backend. Um, and then the web catalog is where the data community is going to come in and explore and also your Editors can edit from both the desktop and web catalog. Uh, many of you are familiar with the exports, so we do have HTML and PDF exports for you to take advantage of on here as well. And now I'll hand it over to Piotr, and he'll cover some of the newest features in 10.3. All right. Uh, thanks, Chase. Um, once again, hello, everyone. Um, let's have a look of what we've uh, added to the product in the last release, 10.3. It's already available. Um, so let's have a look at uh, key features. So one of the uh, core things we've done is uh, we've added a column level uh, functionality uh, to the data lineage. So for those of you who don't uh, haven't seen data lineage in data at all, um, in the, one of the last releases, we've added option to map in, uh, information how the data flows uh, through your uh, ecosystem. Uh, so you can now take uh, one of the objects, uh, which we call the pro data processor. Usually this is a storage procedure or, or uh, it, it can be a database view or uh, a manual package uh, representing ETL package. Um, and then you can show uh, where does where does it read data from. So in, in flows and uh, point it where the data is being uh, written to, which is outflows. And that was uh, for the object level. So you could show source tables and uh, destination tables. Right now, you can also um, define a column level uh, lineage flow, as you can see here in the diagram, that um, yeah, that also includes uh, this information is included in the diagrams as well. Um, this information uh, is done manually. So when you, it's optional, you, you, you can, you don't have to uh, show the flow of, uh, of, of the columns. Uh, and we'll be working on adding uh, more and more automation to fill that information for you. So we've started with manual lineage and we're adding more and more automation. I'll talk about uh, some of that uh, in, uh, in this presentation. For the data classification, uh, we got quite a lot of feedback and requests from you about uh, customizing the existing uh, classifications, maybe adding your own. So we have redesigned the, the module completely. And right now you can um, customize all the rules and all the existing uh, predefined uh, classification functions. And we have also added option to, to add your new custom, uh, your, your own custom classification, even uh, actually more than one. So you can, you can uh, freely define uh, yeah, th those classifications. So mark uh, uh, level of sensitivity uh, and define the, the rules, you know, what kind of columns should be considered as classified. We also added a number of uh, new built-in classification functions. Previously, that was uh, GDPR and PII. And we have also added uh, now 
CCPA for California Consumer Privacy Act, FERPA, HIPAA, and PCI. If you have any uh, other um, ideas uh, or requirements uh, regarding other data protection acts or uh, any other uh, schemes, feel free to share it. We, we might want to uh, research that. Um, we, uh, as I said, we, we are uh, expanding the automation for data lineage. This is one of the um, our long-term goals to, to help you build uh, lineage uh, automatically. Over here, I'd like to point out that the fact that we have ma manual data lineage is, is actually a, uh, a benefit for you. Uh, there are some tools that do it only manual, uh, only automatically. That's that that's great, but uh, no company can do all of the flows. It's literally impossible. And uh, yeah, there are very different various ways you can read and write data. And with data, you can actually document um, quite you know uh, uh, non-obvious flows, such as from API or I don't know using some data feeds or. Um, you know, explain how something is some how data is used in the application form or some something like that. So uh, having manual data lineage it's it's a, a great way to be able to document how your data flows and is being used in various places. Uh, but automation is is obviously important. So we'll be adding a layer of automation. And right now we have added uh, automated uh, data lineage for database use uh, that is that reads data from dependencies. Dependencies uh, are read uh, as a separate step in the import, uh, and by default they are disabled uh, because it makes the process uh, slightly slower. So if you'd like to add, um, build an, uh, the data flow diagram for views automatically, then uh, make sure you re-import data, so perform update, and uh, enable this uh, dependencies checkbox. And the diagram should be created automatically right away. Um, we also added uh, a completely new type of connector. Uh, till now, that was uh, just data. And right now, we are also documenting ETLs. So one of the ETLs is DBT. Uh, the diagram you see over here uh, is uh, from their documentation. They're, they have a, a tool that generates documentation. Um, it's really useful. However, it's not linked to the actual um, tables and views in the uh, in the database. So, with data, you know, let's say you're working with the Snowflake, you can import Snowflake to data you know, and document, you know, relationships, uh, columns, tables, and so on. And if you add uh, as a as a separate uh, as a separate connection DBT, you upload the the the, the project. It will create this diagram as you see here. I think it will also link it to the to the objects on, on the in your documentation. So you will have uh, any like automated flow, automated lineage for your Snowflake database. Uh, I think the mixing uh, the information on lineage and information on you know your data dictionary is a really powerful uh, tool. So if you're using DBT, go ahead and check this. And if you have any issues, just let us know. We uh, will be uh, expanding on that functionality. Uh, another ETL which we've added is SSIS. This is one of the most popular, um, uh, quite old already um, uh, ETL tools from SQL Server. Um, we document, we, we help you import packages. So packages are, are imported into the procedures uh, folder. And every data flow is, that is important has um, has a, its own processor in our data lineage tab. And we, if we can find the, the sources and destinations based on the connection information, we will um, create the flow automatically. So in the, the best case scenario, you will add uh, SSIS and it will create the lineage for you, uh, explaining how your data warehouse is being uh, loaded. Um, we've also uh, extended, improved our ear diagrams. The biggest change here is that you um, you can now add uh, notes uh, to the to the diagrams that was requested <laughs> quite many times over the years. So we this time we decided we we actually would like to you know invest uh, 
and, and deliver this uh, invest in ERDs and deliver this functionality for you. So you can enjoy adding nodes to the ear diagrams. We've added a few minor uh, updates too. Uh, and new connectors. Uh, as usual, we added uh, new data uh, connectors. Um, so there is a sub HANA connector, Amazon DynamoDB. This is a document database from Amazon NetSuite and AstroDB, which is uh, Cassandra in cloud from DataStax. And we've also added uh, storage uh, connections from Azure. So we have Azure Blob Storage and Data Lake Storage. You can now import files from, from those, those storages. Uh, apart from that, you can re read it from your disk and uh, Amazon S3, which was uh, already in the product. OK, and then let's talk about what we are working on right now. So the, the release I told you about is already live. We already uh, released uh, one uh, uh, minor update. And let's talk about what's coming next. Uh, planned for October. We have quite a few exciting features uh, we're working on. So the first one is report catalog so, that extends our repository metadata repository quite quite uh, uh, with, with quite an important uh, puzzle, which is the information on the BI reports. So uh, we'll start with Power BI. Uh, but we want to extend uh, that list with Tableau, SSRS, um, Click, I believe, and the Looker to start with. So what will, will that give you is, is um, we, we can connect to, in, in case of uh, Power BI, we can connect to Power BI Cloud, which is pro and premium, uh, and import a list of uh, reports with, you know, with the information about the like the description, the basic metadata, and also we will uh, read sources. So we'll read the data sources, and we hope to be able to map um, map reports to data sets and data sets to uh, physical tables. So if you have added your data warehouse, we hope to provide your full lineage, end-to-end -end lineage. This is an important because this will make it uh, much more attractive to your business users, which usually um, interact with data through reports. And with, with you being able to provide extra uh, information like description or map uh, map information, like map, map reports to um, uh, business glossary to explain the understanding and purpose of the uh, KPIs and metrics and business terms that will give your uh, business users more, more confidence in, in data, understanding of data, and also with lineage that, that will give them more, more uh, uh, you know, information about uh, where does the data on the report actually come from. So that's the first uh, exciting feature. And another one equally significant in terms of metadata is the reference data management module. Um, so this will give you an option to document your um, static data, some, you know, reference data, lookups, calls, it has different names. In this case, uh, it, it's a list of countries. Uh, you can click off list of currencies, regions, um, departments, all those uh, slowly changing uh, directories, dictionaries of, of, of values. Um, you can um, create uh, one uh, maintained list of those values and explain it, you know, provide with providing a label on description. So it could be managed by a data steward. You can feed it from the actual uh, tables. In this case, you can see we used uh, three columns, customers ca country, orders country, and uh, uh, authors uh, country. And you can see you know, uh, which values are actually you know, used in which, which uh, tables, how often. And you can review um, every value. For instance, you have United States and USA, right? So we can say, OK. We, we should be using only USA, and you can, we can we can reject United States, and we can provide uh, what it should be cleansed to, right? So US United States should be cleansed to USA in our case, right? Because it's it's up to you. These are your uh, re reference data. Um, yeah, so mm, it will have two uh, two areas. So one will be this this uh, mm, 
logical uh, model where you like, define the values of each uh, lookup. And then this physical, which comes from uh, actual data, it comes from the data profiling module, which we added a couple of uh, releases ago. Uh, yeah, I think this will uh, greatly improve your metadata management uh, and data quality uh, initiatives. Uh, because you can really uh, track what kind of uh, like yeah which do, do those uh, columns uh, hold the uh, the right the right uh, the right codes the right values. Moving on, um, I mentioned uh, uh, that we are working on automation of the lineage. Uh, we are currently working on uh, parsing of SQL. So the feature which we added right now comes from dependencies. You know, dependencies are, is this information stored within the database uh, that objects are related. And right now we are uh, we have an R and D done on the parsing of uh, SQL. So actually trying to understand how data is is being processed with views, uh, procedures, and so on. We'll start start with views because this is the easier case. So we will be reading a script from every view, trying to figure out which objects tables, procedures, and so on, are, um, it reads from. So we'll start with call object level lineage built automatically just from scripts. And uh, we'll also like to do a column level. So we'll uh, show you like uh, for each particular column, where, where, does it, where does this data come from? Um, that would be quite powerful. Later, we'll be moving on to supporting that for stored procedures, functions, and other. Uh, and other um, objects, uh, including reports, right? So if you if you add report, which is SQL based, like for instance SSRS, then we'll be including this option too. And everywhere where we can actually find SQL, um, quite a um, useful feature which I tested myself because I've used uh, the prototype. Um, when you create a foreign keys, which is a really powerful. Um, functionality of data. You know, from, from day one, we, we allow you to explain relationships between tables. This is really useful because this adds another uh, important layer of metadata, uh, you know, explaining how tables are, are linked. However, when you create it, you have to, you know, get confidence that it's the right relationship. And in uh, this version, we'll add a simple utility that will, uh, you can click a test button and it will run a number of tests on your actual data, checking if the primary key is actually primary key and checking if foreign key is actually, you know, uh, if there are uh, rows uh, matching uh, primary and foreign key. So really useful, uh, small feature that can uh, help you get confidence in creating uh, foreign keys and primary keys. Active Directory integration, um, data the repository has, has its own uh, permissions module, and we are building a, a, a separate Active Directory toolkit that you can uh, schedule to sync information on users, groups, uh, and permissions from, from Active Directory. And we are working on new connectors. So for ETL, we are researching uh, Azure Data Factory. And we already have quite a success with uh, importing metadata from Fivetran. Uh, and the reporting, uh, as I mentioned, that will be Power BI. OK, that's, that's, that's an overview. And Chase will now cover uh, what you need to get uh, started with 10.3. Perfect. Do you, Chase? Thanks, Peter. So as far as what you need, um, we'll cover a little bit of licensing here. So um, first thing to mention is no matter what license you're using, uh, we're not in any near future planning on one, forcing you to upgrade or two, increasing your costs. So where you're at, as long as you're happy, it's perfectly fine. Um, as far as other options, so we listed out here a lot of the legacy options. Um, currently, we have the Datito plan, which you can see on the pricing page. Uh, which does include unlimited viewers from the web catalog. Um, so if you are looking to go more of that enterprise route, that's a great option. Um, if you need help with licensing, have any questions about licensing, you can contact customer success. Um, and then if you are looking to upgrade and want to learn more about the newer features, um, contact sales is a great option for that. And that can be found on our website. As far as customer success, I will drop uh, a link 
so that you can schedule directly with customer success. You can see here. Um, so if you're a cu current customer, you'll be able to reach out to your customer success manager, book a meeting, ask whatever questions you want. Um, we don't limit those hours. You're not charged by those hours. So it's just there's a resource for you. And then any sales meeting can be booked directly on the website. <clears throat> then for new customers, um, you can, as I mentioned, book with sales on the website. And then all of the pricing information is transparent and clear on the website. There's no hidden cost or fees. Um, we try to keep that very straightforward. Here's our direct contact information. I'm typically fairly uh, available. Piotr uh, may vary in responses, but uh, you know he's typically busy. So we'll make sure that we get back to you either way. Um, we're going to drop off here, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks, Piotr. Thanks, Chase. Thanks, everyone. Bye.